Let me just break this down for you. So as at April 4th, Egypt had recorded a little over a thousand cases. By April 12th, they were at 2,065 cases. And by today, which is April 21st, they are standing at 3,333 cases. From my understanding, Egypt is not under lockdown. However, there's a nighttime curfew uh, that's been moved from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. So previously it was at 7 p.m. and now it's been moved to 8 p.m. So I think between 8 p.m. and 5 a.m. no one is allowed to move around. And so I'll get to speak to one um, well, a youth football coach uh, who's a Ghanaian, by the way, and he lives in Egypt. His name is Dauda Jawara, and he joins us right now on Skype. Dauda, thank you so much, and good morning. How are you? Uh, good morning. Is that Bella? Yes, this is Bella. How are you doing? Uh, I'm good. I'm fine. Okay, so I was just giving some figures as to how the cases in Egypt jumped from just 2,065 by April 12 to two, uh, 3,033 as of today. What could account for the sudden rise in the figures? Uh, Bella, uh, welcome again to uh, Egypt. Uh, okay, initially... I, I, yeah? I, I hope you, you can hear me loud. I can. There's just a bit of feedback. I'm not sure if it's the position or anything, but you go ahead. I think I think I can hear you now. Good. Okay, very good. Uh, initially, I must say the government didn't take uh, serious uh, pragmatic actions against the uh, coronavirus. Mm. Initially, when the thing started in Egypt, it's like uh, when, when uh, Donald Trump said this, this is Egypt, uh, then China thing. Mm -hmm. They they were also doing the same thing. And even the central government even run uh, commercials. The Egypt, they are very strong. Their immune system is very strong and nothing can come near them. Mm -hmm. And then unfortunately, everybody, uh, the, those stories who came to Egypt uh, started reporting positive when they returned back to their country. Mm -hmm. So it sound an alarm to the central government. I don't know. They have to find out uh, if the story that they have been hearing is true. Yeah. So they started going to the hotels where the tourists they where they uh, they were lodging and then some of the uh, tourism attraction places where they went and they started testing and they found out that the, the people over there are becoming uh more and more uh case, like uh, cases you know mm -hmm. daily cases and then uh, the military took it upon themselves okay they also have to conduct some of the uh this in test yeah and then uh, all of them also proved positive within the two weeks period mm. And then yes, even yesterday, the government wasn't serious about it. Uh, and then along the line, they also took an action that, okay, now now the sickness is becoming like a more or less uh, a global thing. So mm -hmm. let's take some issues and then so let's take some measures to curtail uh, the spread of it. So uh, until the two of the army officers died of it, mm -hmm. that's, where they started, that's where they started implementing curfew from 7 p.m., to 6 a.m. And upon their investigations also found out that those who uh, had the disease mainly contacted it uh, during the night, especially the coffee shops, uh, the bar, uh, let's say, in Ghana, we say the drinking spot and during other places. The what, what during the night? What do you mean by during the night? Well, did they ind indicate how that happened? So what about people yeah, who were going about their normal duties the during the day? During the day, most of the cases that they, they, they found out was uh, during the night, when they were sitting in during the uh, this in, uh, coffee shop breaks in okay. the night. Oh, yeah, they like sitting up to... Even Egyptians, they can sit up to 2 a.m. in the morning mm, uh, at the coffee shops. Yeah, so they found out that most of the diseases, uh, the patients contacted the diseases during the night. Mm -hmm. So they found, they found out that, uh, okay, now the, the days... Uh, because we have a lot of sun, this is the psychological part of it, and I think it's also working. Mm. Uh, during the day, uh, they have no cases, I think one or two cases from some families. Uh, yes, yes, I think uh, one okay. or two cases but, mm -hmm. during the day, yeah. But you are not under lockdown. It's just a curfew. No, 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 no. It's a curfew from but eight. But looking it was at your PM numbers, 3,033, that's steep. Is government uh, giving any reason for why they are not placing the country under lockdown? Well, uh, le let me tell you one thing about uh, Egypt. Uh, it's hardly to get information, especially from the central government. Mm. They, always cook, they always cook their story. This is a categorical, I'm stating it. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, they, they always cook their story and then they will bring the official figure from them. Mm-hmm. You understand? Yes. But here, you know, Ghana, the journalists, you have freedom. You have the, 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 the let me say, you have your freedom of information or whatever. Yeah. But here, it's not like that. It's not like that. I, I read uh, about a Guardian reporter, a uh, German a by nationality, yes, yes. who was yes, sent was back suspect. home because she home, yeah. reported I, I think a last figure. Week. Tell me about yes. it. Yes. Uh, the figure that he gave out was a very factual. Yeah. And even there are some Canadian doctors, uh -huh. uh, private the Canadian doctors in Egypt. They have their website. And even that, that website has been closed. Wow. They were, when, when we were, uh, the government were giving figure about 1,800 or so, mm -hmm. they were giving about 19,000. 19,000, yeah. Yes. And then the following day, their website was closed secretly because they don't want that figure to come out. This is our country. So that means that any. there could be a deliberate attempt to massage the figures. Yes. Is there is a deliberate attempt to but do what, that. what could be the reason so, i know you won't get the explanation from government but you live there uh, i'm sure you've had interactions yes. with other nationals what do you think could be the reason uh bella um this our country normally they have to uh like uh, putting an image outside the world that they are very good oh but you know, that's why they don't want to give any figure sometimes even even the death mm -hmm. 200 total death now it's even more than that it's more but than that but they're not reporting it yes they are not reporting it and then they will tell you that uh, maybe they die out of uh, pneumonia wow so okay. they are using pneumonia as an excuse mm. for some death so yeah. so i mean if there's a curfew that means that people are able to go about their normal activities um during the day how is that like are people still concerned how is education like are people adhering to any social distancing protocols using face masks washing their hands oh yes yes uh, for intensive uh, education is on the social distance one and then the using of masks and uh, gloves uh should, uh like a uh, hand sanitizer and other things there's there's, there's an intensive uh, education on that mm. and then during the day you can go about during uh, doing your business or whatever but we have a uh, uh, like a friday and saturday as a weekend mm -hmm. all the mega malls all the shopping and then this in uh uh they are they are they are closed on friday and saturdays okay so you don't have to. they are closed so most is it because yes, of coronavirus then, or this is it's a because tradition? of coronavirus no this is a, a restriction from the government okay you know restriction of movement is lost some part but it's, it's not a total lockdown mm. this uh friday saturdays all the shops are closed Okay. Except pharmacy, bakery shops, and, and other small supermarkets. What about the availability well, that, of PPEs for health professionals as well? Have you, has Egypt received any PPEs from Jack Ma, from the Chinese government, anything? Yes. Uh, okay. Internally, they are also producing some of the uh, PPEs. And then uh, even the military production. Uh, even yesterday, they came out with... Uh, uh, a sanit uh, sanit uh, is it sanitizer? Uh, boots. Yeah, no, no, no. It's not a. It's oh, okay. Some I thought you were trying to say that. Boots. You understand? Yeah, this um, military production. Okay. And okay. they are also manufacturing of these PPEs. And then also the Chinese government and other uh, foreign aid also provided some of the PPEs to the Egyptian government. As at now, for the, I think they are not complaining anything about the PPEs or anything like that. Oh, I see. The health yeah. professionals are not complaining. I mean, not not up. Are they, are they provide you know, just like Ghana, where we are being provided, um, you know, uh, tax waivers for health professionals, citizens are enjoying free water for the next three months, and some parts of us, you know, were enjoying 100% rebate on, you know, our bills, 50% for some people. Are you also enjoying any of those in Egypt? <laughs> well, not at all. Even uh, as I speak to you, yeah, 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 last Saturday, some of our, my, my colleagues were saying, uh, Ghana, it's like uh, we, are, uh, we are having a, a government who always listen to the people and who have the people at heart. And, but for, the, for them, they don't see this, uh, this kind of, uh, uh, let's say, sub sub subsidizing uh, electricity bill or water bill or what, mm -hmm. whatever. No, no, None of that. It's not like that yet. Well, None I guess it's because None they're allowing people to still work anyway. So there's no complaints about, you know, struggles, vulnerable people and all of that, right? 
Yeah, Egypt here yeah, have, have a vulnerable more than even Ghanaians. Even the vulnerable in Egypt is like uh, 40 million people or something like that. But yes, still, uh, you, 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 you don't have any, uh, like say, like a cause to complain about anything. They Nothing. will tell you this is your, yeah, yeah, this is your destiny. So you have to go with it. Have they this closed their destiny. borders, by the way? Yeah, the borders are closed, but it was late close, especially the airport. When, when and then yes, still they have some special cases that they can uh, allow you to travel okay. outside. Okay. But when did the borders close, especially for the airport? Uh, it was around March, uh, if my memory will okay. set me right, uh, like a, a week when Ghana closed their border. border. Oh, a week after Ghana closed its borders. After Ghana well. closed, yeah, closed. All right. Now because I know that. Late. Okay, Ramadan is approaching. When does yeah, it start? Yeah. Tomorrow. Uh, no, 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 Friday. 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 Uh, Are there any measures put in place to ensure that people don't congregate to pray, any of that? Yeah, the measures have been put in place since, uh, I think, uh, one month ago. Yeah. Okay. Uh, most, all the mosques are closed. All mm. the Coptic churches are closed. And then it also applies in the uh, Ramadan. This thing. Okay. The mosques are not open. The social gathering has been closed. Uh and there are so many uh, factors that will prevent people from gathering. And in, in, at least four or five people cannot stand at one place and chat. Oh, I see. It, may, it should be a distance. Uh, this, okay. Uh, social distance uh, issues. Yeah. But, but what about you? You are a football coach for yeah. what? Young people, right? Yeah, yeah. Are now you able to still go to work? I mean, how has it affected you? Yeah, initially we had about two or three weeks break without going to work, but now we are having an online training. Mm. Uh, we, we online have training Zoom. for football? Yeah. How, for football, how does yeah. that work? Uh, we connect all the players uh, involved on Zoom uh, application on Facebook, uh -huh. and then we perform the training in our indoors, and then they watch, and then they do the example accordingly. So what, we have every, every student should have maybe a small pitch in their home? Or what yeah, yeah. Most of them, most of them are, most of our kids have a small pitch. Uh, some of them also use their halls for the exercises. At least you need about 10 meters square exercise. Oh, okay. So we have training on Saturday, Monday, and then Wednesday on Zoom application on Facebook. I see. So what, they are not going to school anymore? No, 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 no. Okay, schools are not schools, in session. Yeah, 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 schools are not in session. Uh, uh, what else? They don't, no, they are always indoors and then uh, okay. having their studies also on online like that. Yeah. I see. Anyway, yeah. Donna, thank you so much for speaking to us and giving us some information on what's happening in Egypt. And I, I hope that you're being treated well. No issue of discrimination or any of that, right? No, no, no. None issue of, of discrimination okay. is not part of Egyptian right. culture. Uh, they always see us as a brothers, and then we are also happy here. And then also, thank you for having me. And then my regards to Ghanaians, they should adhere to the uh, World Health Organization's uh, precautions. And then I think uh, uh, the lockdown doesn't mean that the corona is uh, is out of uh, uh, place, but yeah. we have to take uh, precaution measures to stay healthy. Right. And my regards to everybody watching me now. Definitely. And please take good care of yourself, and we hope to see you when all this is over. All right? Thank okay, yeah, so thank that's Dauda Jara. Uh, he's a football coach in Egypt. Just giving us some information on what's happening in Egypt.